Okay. Hi and welcome back to another TechMinds video. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the RS918, which is an HF SDR transceiver. Now this particular radio can be found on the internet with many different model numbers, but this is essentially an MSHF, which is designed by M0NKA. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. So this radio has an output power of around 10 to 15 watts, depending on how you're powering it. This particular model came with an internal battery, but you can also power it from an external power supply. Now by doing this, the output power is actually increased. And I'll show you more about the power measurements later in the video. This radio has general coverage from 0.8 megahertz all the way up to 32 megahertz. But outside of the amateur bands, performance may be degraded. It can transmit, however, from 160 meters up to 10 meters, which covers all of the handbands. Now it's extremely well built with all the casing being metal to protect the insides. On the left hand side, we find the antenna connection, which is a BNC socket. So it's easily disconnected or connected. And we also have a USB host and a data link DFU port, which is used for connecting to the computer. Now on the right hand side, we find all of the ports to connect your peripherals, such as microphone, extension speaker, Morse key, and a line in and line out for audio. You'll also notice two power ports. One is specifically for charging the internal battery, and the other is to power the radio from an external power supply. There's also a battery switch on or off, which is used to isolate the battery from the radio. Now underneath, we'll find a nice little pullout stand, which when used on a desk or flat surface provides a nice viewing angle to the front of the radio. And this kind of makes sense considering that the speaker grill is on the back. Now in the box, we find an angled BNC to SO239 adapter, a hand microphone, which features a sprung clip on the rear, now the connector on the end of the microphone cable is a four way 3.5 millimeter jack. Now I'm not normally a fan of these type of connectors for microphones, but with its angled style and quality socket on the radio, it does actually feel quite secure when it's attached. We also get a mains powered lithium iron battery charger, which is not to be confused or used as a radio power supply, but it is only used to charge the internal battery using the dedicated charging port on the side of the radio as shown earlier. So let's plug an antenna in and turn on the radio. I'm going to attach my NFED half wave antenna directly to the radio, and then I'll turn on the battery power using the switch on the right hand side. Now to power on the radio, simply tap the power button on the top left. The radio will then start booting. And after a short moment, you'll see a lovely colorful waterfall and hopefully start to receive some signals. Now the buttons along the bottom are a mode button. This is to change the modulation type like FM, USB, LSB, etc. The DSP button enables or disables the built-in DSP. The PA button will cycle through the different power levels and the BW button adjusts the receive bandwidth. Now under the display, we also have some further buttons which enable entry into the radio's main configuration along with some other shortcut keys such as VFO switching. Now on the right hand side, we have the step buttons, which changes the frequency steps of the main VFO control knob labeled tune. Now on the left top, we have our band up and down buttons, which make it easy to switch between each of the ham radio bands. And most of the buttons are actually multifunction, so you can press them or hold them for a different function. What's nice about this is that the selected function is highlighted on the display. And to change the values of these features, you simply turn the appropriate control. Now, even though this radio has an intensive menu system, all of the features which are needed for everyday use or to get you on the air quickly are right in front of you. Now, I won't go into every menu setting as there are hundreds of them. Now, this radio can be tweaked extremely finely. But some of the real useful features like SWR protection, where you can set a VSWR level where the radio will not transmit to protect its final RF stages is quite useful. Other settings we can change are related to the audio routing. When the radio is plugged into a computer, this radio acts as a USB sound card, meaning that we can pipe audio to it and from it via the computer, which is great for digital modes. 
Within the menu system, we can also change whether we are using an Electra or dynamic microphone, along with changing the audio input and output to line in and line out sockets. We're also able to limit TX on certain bands and limit power on certain bands. Now that's perfect if your license only allows you to transmit on certain frequencies or certain power levels. I'll point out though that there are a lot of settings which you will not want to play with and which could potentially stop the radio from working as intended. So it's best to only change the settings that you know what they do. Now also within the settings menu, we're able to change the type of digital decoding the radio performs while in digital mode. We have the choice of free DV, RITI or BPSK. Now what's interesting here is that not only does this radio decode free DV, it also transmits it too using the FD1600 free DV format. Now I haven't tested this with another free DV user, but if this works out of the box, then it's quite a truly interesting idea. My general opinion is that the receiver on the, on the new SDX range is outstanding, uh, and that's going to be a good thing. Um, all the internal parametric EQs are pretty much the same as what I'm using here. Uh, the same menu settings and that, so I've got all that stored up on the uh, Word document file, so I'll, I'll set that side up of things straight away. But I'm really looking forward to, to the receive side of things, and there's a, there's a few features with the new FDDX range that, that just sound so good, like there's some sort of tuning feature I've been reading about. So in that recording, the audio from the radio was being recorded using a program called Audacity on my computer. Now the audio source was coming from the radio via USB. As you can clearly hear, the quality is quite superb and that was even without any DSP turned on. Now as well as the demodulated audio, the radio can also send IQ data via the USB, allowing SDR applications like HDSDR to decode this real time on a computer. Now as mentioned earlier, this particular model that I have has an inbuilt battery. Now, not all of them will come with a battery, so if you want one, make sure it's included. So let's take a look at some power levels when using the internal battery or using an external power supply. So first up, we'll try it with a power supply connected. The external power supply is set to 13.8 volts, and we also have a 50 ohm dummy load connected to the power meter. The radio is then connected to the input of the power meter. So first up was 28 megahertz, and we saw around six watts. We then moved down to 18 megahertz, and here we're seeing a slightly higher at 12.8 watts. A bit further down to 20 meters, which is 14 megahertz, we're looking at around 13.7. And then even further down at seven megahertz, we're looking at around 12 watts. The lowest one that I tested was 3.8 megahertz, i.e. 80 meters, and here we saw around eight watts output. Now I'm just gonna shut the radio down, disconnect the external power supply, and then flick the switch to enable the battery, and then turn it back on. So with the battery connected on 3.8 megahertz, we saw around 5.5 watts. On 7 megahertz, 40 meters, we saw around 8 watts. And on 14 megahertz, we saw around 8 watts. And on 18 megahertz, we saw 9 watts. Now, disappointingly, when we got up to 28 megahertz, it dropped to around 4 watts. Now, to provide a constant carrier in this test, I was using frequency modulation. So as you can see, it definitely works a lot better with an external power supply connected. And if you're out in the field, you could probably connect it up to something like a car battery or something which can give you a little bit more voltage. But anyhow, it was nice to do this test and see the results. Of course, using the internal battery with slightly less power is still perfectly usable. You could work the world in the right conditions on just a few watts. Mexico Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Whiskey 
Yeah, very good afternoon, Damian. Well, I'm just uh, testing a, uh, a new portable radio just running around 10 watts on an RS918, a Radio Sierra 918 uh, portable uh, HF radio. Uh, yeah, you're a lovely 5'9", nice and clear and strong into the United Kingdom this afternoon. Back to you. Thanks a lot, 73. Well, there I had a quick QSO between myself and a station in Slovenia as the crow flies that's around 1,000 miles or 1,600 kilometers from my location. And that's not particularly bad considering we're running around 8 watts as I was using the internal battery. Now, talking of the internal battery, let's take a look at what's installed. I will mention though that I will not do a full teardown on this radio as there are plenty of photos on the internet of the MCHF which I'll leave a link to in the description below. Now as we can see here the battery pack and it appears to be four cells within. Now, if you google the part number printed there there's lots of information online of where you can purchase them. So it looks like when these finally begin to fail they're quite easily replaced. Now for those interested in where I purchased this exact radio from with the battery already installed and the accessories that come with it, well I purchased this from good old Banggood and it took around two weeks to arrive here in the UK. I'll leave a link down in the description for you to check out. What I'll also do is leave a link to the original designer of this radio so that he can get some credit for this. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you own one of these let me know what you think of it and if there's any flaws to this particular radio I'd love to hear from you. Until the next video take care stay safe thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.